Even the other drivers are saying give Kyle Larson a waiver. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. I'm taking a break from doing tile work in the bathroom, everyone's favorite home improvement project, to talk about everyone's favorite NASCAR topic of the moment, and that's whether or not Kyle Larson will get a waiver. It's now been four days since they've applied for a waiver, and in unprecedented fashion, NASCAR has still not decided on whether or not they will grant him his waiver or deny him his waiver. Now remember, they've never denied a waiver before, so it would be unprecedented circumstances for them to do this. It appears that they might be trying to make Hendrick Motorsports sweat this out a little bit. And we're going into Gateway on Sunday. And we still have this uncertainty clouding over the Cup Series on whether or not Kyle Larson, one of the best drivers in the series, is going to be able to compete for a championship or if this is going to have to, I don't know, potentially go to litigation from Hendrick Motorsports versus NASCAR. Remains to be seen if that's even an avenue that they'd be willing to take if the waiver does get denied. But on Saturday... Matt Weaver and a number of the other print media people uh, in NASCAR talk to the drivers. And if you don't follow Matt Weaver on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, definitely give him a follow. Great NASCAR coverage, great short track coverage, all around great reporter. So most of the quotes I'm using from here are from his story. I want to make sure he got some credit. So first driver that was mentioned was Kyle Busch asked about whether or not Kyle Larson should get a waiver. And he said he's Kyle Larson. The guy's doing more for motorsports than anybody else. Yeah, I think that's kind of the general consensus amongst the fan base right now because the guy is literally doing more than anyone else raises a cup car racing any car wins in a sprint car back in a cup car this weekend he'll be back in a sprint car and then he'll probably be back at the indianapolis 500 next year assuming nascar doesn't do something stupid like you know deny him a waiver and then you have a guy like michael mcdowell and mcdowell people maybe forget this was a champ car driver in a previous life the guy is multi-talented he's a fantastic race car driver in his own right and he talked about the kyle larson situation and he said quote i don't see the other side of this point at all i think if it was me and i did it i think that's a different situation i hate to say it like that but kyle larson's going to win five or six or seven races this year to sit here and say that he's not going to get a waiver because he tried to do the double, brought a tremendous amount of eyeballs on our sport and a tremendous amount of eyeballs on IndyCar and just helped motorsport overall is crazy. So I know there's arguments to to that, but I mean, come on, we're talking about the best driver that's ever sat in a stock car and we're not going to give him a pass. That's crazy. Maybe he embellished a little bit on best driver to ever sit in a stock car, right? Kyle Larson has one championship, 25 wins at this point. Fantastic stock car driver, NASCAR Hall of Famer when he decides to retire, but Michael McDowell makes a great point right there. Kyle Larson has done more for motorsports in his two weeks than any other NASCAR driver has done for the sport in the last couple of years in terms of bringing eyeballs to the sport. You have people outside of NASCAR that were like, oh, I'm interested in Kyle Larson doing the double. And Kyle Larson racing other places is great for NASCAR because people become fans of him in other spots, men, women, children, doesn't matter, dogs even. And they like Kyle Larson. Where does he race that full time? NASCAR Cup Series. So they'll be tuned in to try to see how he performs over there. It's lunacy that he hasn't been granted a waiver. Moving on to Brad Keselowski, team owner, driver in the series as well. He says, those are unique circumstances. I like the idea of drivers running the double. I think that's good for the sport. It's good for the industry as a whole. I think everyone sees the value in that. There's probably some industry angst over when things got tough, what got prioritized, but that's just how it goes sometimes. I don't think that you have an answer to make that any better. I certainly think it's an interesting situation. I think he will get a waiver and I think he should get a waiver and we'll move on from this. It does seem for now that he's going to have to sweat a little bit. And I think Brad is pretty much encompassing what's going on here. NASCAR is making them sweat this out because they did choose to race the Indianapolis 500 over the Coke 600, which is considered a crown jewel. But in the grand scheme of things, the Indianapolis 500 is the biggest race in the world. Kyle Larson, Hendrick Motorsports, prioritizing that over the Coke 600 is not a crazy idea at all. If you gave anybody an option, would you rather race the Indianapolis 500 with a chance to win because that's how competitive you are or race the Coke 600? They're going to pick the Indianapolis 500. It just is what it is. And I'm sorry that NASCAR doesn't necessarily have the the history and the legacy of a race that's as important as the Indianapolis 500, but it just kind of is what it is. The Daytona 500 is a great race in itself. It is not the Indianapolis 500. And I think that's why they prioritize it at the end of the day. Denny Hamlin, in true Denny Hamlin fashion, I don't think Denny necessarily wants him to have a waiver. My opinion, I don't think that he necessarily wants that. He views it. Kyle Larson as a competitor, right? As a guy that can stand in his way of getting a championship after he's been trying for 19 seasons up to this point. So he had an interesting quote. He said, 
I don't know when they submitted it and what is usually the timeline for accepting or denying in a certain amount of time. I certainly think that they made their best effort to get there. I also understand NASCAR's part in wanting to protect themselves from this happening in the future, but I think they made a good faith effort to race. So Denny kind of played devil's advocate right there, right? Denny's a team owner. He's also a driver. He also wants to win a championship and he needs to try to stay in the good graces of NASCAR a little bit because he's obviously been the most outspoken driver out there over the last few seasons. But the timeline, Hendrick Motorsports said that it confirmed that they had applied for a waiver on Thursday. They didn't say if they applied on Thursday, if they applied earlier in the week, didn't say that. But Jeff Gluck went and looked at Bob Hockers' tweets for when drivers applied and were granted waivers. And the longest anybody ever had to wait was the next business day. So Kyle Larson now going on four days heading into another race is a little unprecedented. And then you have Tyler Reddick, and he said, yeah, it's concerning. It's really concerning. That's all I'm going to say right now. Agreed. I think it's super concerning because, again, the guy's gone out there and tried to promote NASCAR, and now he could be facing the ch- the, the possibility of not racing for a championship. And it's just it's ludicrous at this point. Then you move on to Ty Gibbs, and he says he's really important to our sport, and it was really good for NASCAR to have him there. I don't have a say in the decision, but that's what I think. So essentially, Gibbs is like... Ty's like, yeah, dude, it's good for him to be there. It's good for the sport to have one of our best stars over there racing the Indianapolis 500, being competitive, and barring a pit penalty, likely would have finished in the top five. That's good for NASCAR if Kyle Larson looks that impressive at the Indianapolis 500. And then you move on to Chase Briscoe, and he says, I'm torn on it. I don't quite know which way I lean. I think that uh, it's tough because there was never an intention to miss a cup race, but obviously when you sign up to run the cup series, it's part of the deal that you run every single race. I agree on that, but we also had Chase Elliott get granted a waiver for intentionally wrecking Denny Hamlin last year at the Coke 600. Johnny Sauter in 2019 gets a waiver for intentionally wrecking Austin Hill in a truck series race at Iowa. So they had every intention of racing every race, weren't able to race every race, and were still granted a waiver. Kyle Larson had every intention of racing a race. And essentially never had any behavioral outburst, didn't throw a temper tantrum on track, and still tried to get to Charlotte in time, you know, to finish the race. And now we're making a sweat over it. So I don't necessarily love all this. I don't love the turmoil around this. I think this has been handled really poorly by by NASCAR at a time where I feel like they've been making okay decisions. Um, like I said in a previous video, 99% of the time when NASCAR makes a decision, changes something, I can understand the the reasoning behind it more often than not i can understand it doesn't mean i necessarily like it but i can understand why they're doing something why they're making him sweat this out i absolutely do not understand that at all and if they deny him a waiver that is just a poor look for for the for the sport overall for the guys in charge women and women men and women in charge for jim france for everyone involved it's a bad look if they do deny him this waiver and it's going going to discourage any of these other drivers from doing something outside of nascar and i don't think that's right i think motorsport fans want to see guys go test themselves in different cars and in different series and it's good for all of motorsports overall rising tide lifts all ships and i get it right nascar wants to make sure that they remain the top dog in america they're going to right indycar is being run by a geriatric at this point and they have no idea on how to actually promote their sport outside of the indianapolis 500 NASCAR doesn't have anything to worry about in terms of IndyCar on the come up. Even with Formula One, NASCAR still trumps them. So it, it it's just a bad look overall. And hopefully Kyle Larson gets a waiver so we can stop talking about this. But for now, let me know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.